then we'll have um, this question. Um, lunch will be after my presentation, as I have the tough task of presenting before lunch. Well, we started late, so I guess we're not all that hungry. But I won't be long, I promise. And um, in the back of this room, uh, Mr. Leo, remember, I have to get a Florida, sorry, I have to get accustomed to the names. Florida has a small presentation on his computer and some textbook he published. And just a view of some participants beside the education sector who is who, they are present here today. The Water Company, the Dry Dock, Port Authority, Chamber of Commerce, Trade Union, Oil Refinery, and the Press. So as we, prog as we progress through the day, any other persons will just update you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the tough task of doing this transitioning because, of course, the perception of TVET in the Caribbean. But I want you to follow me. I'm, you notice I'm down here because you'll get a perception or you, well, you'll develop an idea as to who this man standing in front of you really is. I started an institution 26 years ago, which is now a tertiary institution to revolutionize education in Jamaica. And I say this because having looked at the system, most of us as Caribbean people want our children to become lawyers, doctors, and along the line of classical education. But I'm going to show you how I have allowed myself through my institution to have translated and get the same results without following the traditional model. Now, in the secondary school system in Jamaica, it is, it is categorized, especially in my time, before TVET in terms of the CBET methodology, and policies were introduced. You had the traditional grammar school, and this is where the students were very brilliant, who wanted to study along the line of classical education. They, well, that's what most of us in the Caribbean, we focus on that. Then you have, so those who weren't brilliant were then sent to we have an exam at that time, in my time, called the Common Entrance, which segregated at that time approximately 10,000 kids who would have gone off to the traditional grammar school where you learn the literature and you learn the Latin, and of course, you're expected to become and those who could not, of the near 40,000 or so, or after you have creamed 10,000 and sent them along a track, then you send the rest either to what is called the secondary schools at that time. Secondary school, just follow my abbreviation. And the technical schools were in between because they capture some of the higher and some of the low and equip them. That's where I went. But I'm very happy because it taught me how to think strategic to come back to build an institution to revolutionize. So what happened? So at age 19, you can calculate my age, I decided to build a school. What does a 19-year-old know about a school? Of course, nobody in Jamaica looks at me. But what I did is that I went after these kids who, of course, would have graduated psychologically murdered because there's nowhere to go 
and then become a part of the 26,000 or so that needs to unattach youths. So what did I do? Just with high school education, and I'm, I'm so happy of my, proud of my technical high school. It's called Stets, St. Elizabeth Technical High School. They have taught me how to think. The skills coupled with the humanities. Because, of course, if you wanted to become doctors, you could become doctors. And you want to become lawyers, you could. And those of us who wanted to learn food and nutrition would go off and learn food and nutrition with the sciences of food biology and, um, and, and chemistry. But one of the things I did at age 19, I forged alliance to, to sidetrack the bureaucracy in Jamaica where I was sending 150 Jamaicans to accredited colleges in the United States of America and Canada, namely Hawking College in Ohio and Canada's most pristine hotel school, which is George Brown College. So they would come to me at Western Hospitality. They would take their first year of college because they had no CXEs or O level. And then, thanks to the president of Hawking, who started that college, Dr. John Light, who would take my students, just as how we are here giving to you free of cost or service, they would take approximately 150 Jamaican on either full or reduced scholarship. My, the late board chairman, Dr. Nadine Scott, even though she studied along the classical education line, I remembered we traverse the cold terrains of America. Thirteen airports in ten days soliciting scholarships for Jamaicans. Because I wanted to prove that a student did not need the traditional education of CXE to write a PhD. And I was, in, I, I was destined to prove to society that it can be achieved. Now today, we're registered, we're accredited by the same government who would have rejected these kids then but I'm going to tell you the interesting story for you to follow with me. One of our students, out of the several hundreds, her name is June Clark. Of course, June went to the, to the heart system she did not attend the traditional grammar school 20 odd years ago because, of course, they wouldn't take her. She had no subjects. So she went and worked as a cook in the hotel. Of course, it's a menial job. Just like how the students in Curacao, when I'm doing my research and traveling around, they said hotel work is tough job. But June, like the many other Jamaicans, believed in this product, or they gambled. So they decided to come to Western Hospitality Institute. Remember, this is a girl with no subject, never studied along the line. So she came to us, she did a diploma, which had no value, because it was not recognized or accredited. But I was able to send her off, like the others, to the United States of America to Hawking College, where she earned two associate degree first class honors. Are you with me? So it's A-S-C Hon and A-A Hon. -A 
she was never to be. I want you to see how Tevet has transitioned into and still maintaining the prestige. June didn't stop there because she was excited to say, my God, I too can enter a college. So she made sure, she was very, very ambitious. She ventured off to the prestigious Florida International University where she used the associate degree and earned a scholarship, wrote her bachelor's of science degree, summa cum laude, first class honors. She then returned to Jamaica, enrolled in the Nova Southeastern University MBA program, and graduated with her MBA. All the accolades are adding up, eh? This is a, this is a girl that was never supposed to be. June Clark, a few years ago, had applied to the Montego Bay Community College. I can say it because it's on TV. You can Google it when you leave here to follow the track. She was, before she came to us, she applied to Montego Bay Community College, but they told her she can't get in because she has no CXCs or O level. So that's why she ended up with us. It is interesting that having earned the MBA, worked as a chef, they then hired her to be a lecturer, the same college that refused her because she now has an MBA. When June was ready to go off to do her PhD, how ambitious is that? At Oklahoma State, because now she wanted to be and she wanted to continue the track of being in a white university to challenge and to measure. She did her PhD when she was ready to leave, lecturing at the Montego Bay Community College. The government said they can't give her any study leave. I then said to June, you need to go because PhD in tourism is a shortage across the world. And once you have finished, I can guarantee you it's an automatic track to citizenship and to green card and citizenship. But she, never, she really wanted to come back. So June Clark then enrolled in the PhD program at Oklahoma State University and graduated with a PhD. And now she is Dr. June Clark. Thank you. Right. Now, what is so interesting is that before she graduated, four universities, including the great Johnsons and Whale, were, went after her because she had a unique skill. She was a chef. And she is the first Jamaican to have worked to the level of an executive chef, being a female with super clubs, hotels in Jamaica. And the first Jamaican to date who would have worked at that level and would have had a PhD in hotel administration. So immediately, she was recruited. And she then selected. She's now a professor at Delaware State University. <laughs> Are you seeing TVET at work? So, our CEO, having given you a background as to my little contribution. And this is only a few, because I could take you to many firsts. To many firsts. Because the first black executive chef in 25 years for the prestigious Half Moon Hotel is a graduate of ours. The first black executive chef Jamaican for the largest hotel in Jamaica, 
Spanish hotel, a thousand room, is a graduate of ours. The first black executive chef for the largest sandals hotel in the entire Jamaica and the region is a graduate of ours. So this, I'm telling you, we are bridging. You saw Dr. Dyer spoke about the skills and taking it to the highest level. We are saying, now we are here to bridge the divide between TVET education and the traditional classical education. That's where the June, Dr. June Clark comes in and these chefs. That's what I want to see taking place in your country. So my CEO and our senior director, Jennifer Walker, then throw me into national spotlight where I was hit with a failing program where the government has invested over a billion dollars in training our nation youth. Because at that time, the previous administration, which is a political administration, came up with a very brilliant idea. And the idea was to go after these 26,000 unattached youth. So after a gathering like this of all principals in the country who offers the program and a very stormy exercise because the return on investment were so poor, the retention was so bad, students were dropping out of the program and taxpayers' money was going down the drain. Jennifer was summoned to this meeting as the, the person in charge of the examination for the NVQ in Jamaica. And of course, before I thought about it, Jennifer uttered, we need a committee, because of course it's a project to spearhead this, to manage the concern. And then my CEO, Dr. McLean, decided Dr. Cornwall, you're going to leave. But I now believe it was divine intervention because today the program has, so, has been so transformed that it has its pride of place in the Ministry of Education. Thank you. So... The program is called the Career Advancement Program to treat with these unattached youths and to, of course, increase certification. So, of course, we met and we decided that, of course, um, we had to reposition the program. And in rebranding the whole exercise to treat with the youth, because by then the government had cut the amount from 15,000 youth because it was too much money wasted to know approximately 5,000 youths. And then the same June Clark, the same philosophy I had to bring into to, to that program. And she coined the slogan, change of attitude through performance. So we had to do a SWOT analysis and we look at all the strengths and weaknesses. And we recognize that at the core of the poor performance, what was lacking and what was wasting of taxpayers' money was leadership. So I am from private sector, so what? So I could talk the things up and don't care because I'm from private, I have no job to lose. So, as I said, I think my CEO was led by divine guidance. So of course, we, the ministry under her watch now, the program was managed before by the Hartress NTA slash ministry and a director was then in place. But now the program fully falls under the Ministry of Education. And I don't think my CEO was prepared to be dragged across the cold for a failing program. So then, the burden rests on my shoulder and the technical working committee 
to make sure that this program was rebranded. So, of course, our focus at the Technical Working Committee for this particular project was to improve the results, to manage the concern between all the stakeholders, to rebrand the program, to review the overall management and administration of the program, to establish subcommittee to manage the program, ensure that all parties are aware, are aware of the principles and practices. And just as how you see our CEO pulling out the various documents, I will forever give credit to the then director, Mrs. Linda Stewart Doman, who I could be pulling out um, documents to show you the various policies that were implemented to guide the success of this program. We have to act as an, a conduit between CAP, NCT, Veteran Matters of Assessment, and also the City and Gills, which is um, British based, provide support of conformance to procedures, etc. We assume our roles based on what was expected of us. And by extension, we had to put a few committees in place to manage the money or the taxpayers' money, focus also on numeracy and literacy through the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, extensive capacity building through Dr. Roa Mande's office, Hartrust NTA, and she sits on this com um, committee to provide that kind of um, support. Training, recruitment, and development. I'm sharing this with you because this is a model that you can probably look at in addressing your own youth, high unemployment amongst your youth. Monitoring and evaluation, finance and partnership, examination, and curriculum. Immediately, we had to move to, um, into a retreat to see how we can rebrand the program and to improve the exam results. So we basically have several meetings every Monday, every second Monday of each month. And last Monday, I have to traverse for three hours from Montego Bay to Kingston without pay at my own expense staying in hotel to give up myself service to country to make sure that this program is a success. And thank you. So we have several meetings, so much so that my CEO now can now leave me with the principals and coordinator. No more quarrel ensues because the program has its pride of place. So she, the program, my minister is the proudest person ever because he was hit with a failing program and it has been so rebranded and doing well that he's on top of the world. The whole, we, we make sure we enacted the CBET methodology, prepare, because I had a rude awakening, like most of you. I thought that CBET was, well, TVET was technically aligned to what I did in technical school, which is the food and nutrition, the electrical insulation. So I keep telling Dr. McLean's um, education officers that you are not doing, you're not producing, TVET is not doing well, until I had to learn that the methodology is different. CBET prepares for this, the student for the work, for industry. What we were doing in high school was TVET as it relates to the CXC model for exit, I guess, into higher education, etc. So we had to implement several CBET lesson plans. This is just my, our second year in, in, as a committee. We had to put into place examination committees. We, had a we have had comprehensive training, ongoing training, motivational seminar, because those kids, most of them are unattached. And of course, the psyche is of such 
that we have to make sure that we have sev a motivational seminar to inspire the kids. We have now a grade 11 a, a database which can track every single grade 11 student. Whether they are in the classical form of grammar school or technical or secondary, we can now track our nearly 50,000 grade 11 students. We made sure that was in place. We make sure we define what should the learner look like. What should they look like upon completion of the program? So it took a whole lot. So we look at a model, which is the, Ever um, the Everett Rogers Diffusion Theory. And of course, it informs us what the naysayers are going to say what the early adopters are, and the percentage as we go through, and still going through. So we created the rebranded roadmap. Thanks, Mr. Riley, for your hard work, and they'll hear from you about STEM. We're a team, we're a team. And what we've basically said in rebranding the program, we had to have sensitizations. We have to make sure that our committee was fully engaged. We have to have the training of principals and teachers because a lot of the principals were only interested in the money. They're not interested in the learner because it pay heavy dividend. Because, it's true, because as you heard um, earlier and you will hear here, TVET in essence is funded through the Hartro NTA. And with thanks to the administration led by the government of the Jamaica Labour Party at that time, Mr. Siaga, he ensured that a trust was set up and the money was not paid into the general consolidation fund. It goes directly to what it's intended for. So Dr. McLean spoke about it. So that 3% goes toward train. So you know what they say? They say heart is a rich company. You see the hotel? You saw the hotel Dr. Dyer spoke about. Oh, you need to come and see. So we had to ensure that um, we trained the principals. One of the things that we came up with in the program is that we realized we had to, in changing the perception we had to move the program into tertiary, especially for those students who figure going back to the secondary school system, people would see them as being done again. So we brought the program into the tertiary institution where they dress up in the tertiary uniform and you can't tell them that they're not training for teachers because they're going onto the tertiary campus to do the CAP program. So you change the mindset. Psychology of learning is a hell of a thing, you know. Because now they're going on the college campus. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to Sam Sharp Teachers College. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to the University of Technology. The mindset. But they are going there to do the CAP program. Are you with me? So that is one thing. And well, then what we did was to now look at the ones who were the bright ones the lawyers, the doctors, and like Dr. McLean says earlier, we then align that, that every student doing CAPE, in my time it was called A-levels, must do a skill. So whether they are doing the courses for medicine, which is the, the physics, the biology, the chemistry, they probably could take a skill in dental assistant because at the end of the day, they need to go and work to send themselves back to school because some of them parents don't have the money. So they too, so skill has now moved into the, 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 the elite pathway, which of course would have been the traditional grammar school. Yes, they are doing the same skill. So, they, so that is the whole move. So the, the ones who were in, uh, the unattached moved into the college, and then you complement that, aligning it too the um 
the, 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 the grammar schools. And then we have the other model where you have the ones who can't read and write. And those are treated with the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning. Because as the CEO tells you, every, our, man, our motto is on the ministry, every child can learn, every child must learn. Thank you. So of course, once the traction and the pride of place of camp return or is returning, then all stakeholders in the ministry, including the education officers, and everyone is now actively involved. So students emerging with increasing skills, social adaptable, entrepreneurship, because one of the things that we have done is to align the entrepreneurship to the national U.S. entrepreneurship competition where we want to send a team to compete at the University of Delaware from this program. Because just as how we send them to the Script Howard um, uh, Spelling Bee competition, we are sending our young student to compete um, internationally um, in entrepreneurship through the CAP program. Thank you. So what we have done, we have had the first cohort of graduates, nationally. The over nearly 2,000 graduates assembled last December to a very proud moment in the, in the Jamaica Conference Center in Kingston. And our Minister of Education and our PS and our CEO and all, uh, you just beam from heirs to heirs to see the young hearts with the smiles on faces that they now have hope. And what that eventually do, I can't overemphasize. You have seen it transforming your own motherland. The Netherlands, moving from a 36% unemployment to now 11%. You have to move by going after these youths. And we stand ready to help. That's why we come here. We give up ourselves to be here with you. So we look at the area of concerns when we were designing the program. And one of the things I learned last minute, you know, is that the political directorate, you have to be very... I don't get caught up into politics. I am here to serve my country. And I come here with my team to help you to better your system. So therefore, I had to carefully maneuver through treacherous waters because this program started under the previous government, which is led by the Jamaica Labour Party, um, Minister Andrew Holness. But we have a good minister who believes in continuing good policies. And I just saw the former minister when, before I came here. The same day, he was having breakfast in the hotel I was staying um, the Pegasus, and I said to him, how do you like how the cap has been rebranded? And he laughed. So these are some of the things that we had to take into consideration when we were doing our rebranding. So we have accomplished a lot, and I won't bore you with that. Based on the new feature of cap, we have a structure in place to manage CAP, which is headed by a director who reports to our CEO and several different, um, we call them technical development officers who work closely with the education officers because the key thing to a successful program is leadership, governance, accountability. You see, as private sector, I was more concerned on the return on investment for our taxpayers. So I spoke about that. So we, what has happened to the tertiary institution is that it improved the student self-esteem when we moved them into tertiary. Um, it was additional certification, both from the NCTVET and from tertiary. Program assurance, quality assurance, 
Because remember, tertiary is guided by the University Council of Jamaica, which is, accredit which is responsible for accrediting um, tertiary institutions. We also had upward an NCT vet, of course, who looks at the quality framework and several different things. So this is how the program is aligned. I'll be finishing another five minutes. I know the stomach are, are, are turning, but we're within time. What time is it now? What time? So in five minutes, 12.30. So we'll go for lunch at 12.30 and return at 1.30. Okay, so we, um, we align the, the, the skills. That should be that area that is blank. So we have over 150 standards or more with the NCT vet. So we have teacher training skills, we have health assistance skill, business administration, and then we have our apprenticeship program, which you heard about. Then we have this tertiary institution, and of course, when the students finish the tertiary, they're expected to leave with their NVQ or CVQ certification, along with a certificate from the tertiary institution. And, of course, if they want to do an apprenticeship. So it's like three different certifications we shoot towards. So you can see it at work. Look at the arts. This is a typical, whether it's technical or, or grammar school. So if a student wants to get into engineering or arts, whether it be law or into medicine, they look at the sciences. What we're basically saying, twin that with a skill, whether it's data up, web design, or in, if you're doing the, to, heading toward medicine, nursing, you do dental assistant, healthcare, whatever you want to do, twin it with a skill, and then you can leave with your CAPE certification, your NVQ, CVQ certification. So you prepare them also for work. And in closing, this is what the statistics now shows. I look back at four years, at 2012, we do the City and Guilds exams, and um, when we took over, in 2014, that was January 2014, we had only six months to turn, turn this whole thing around. So we move Matt's grade from 80% um, in 2013 to 82% with the City and Guild out of London. And, and, in, and this year it's up to 84%. In 2012, in, when we took over, um, the, the English was at 48%. For the first time in the country's history, we have now moved English to 78%. You're talking about unattached youth, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> and most importantly, not only are we teaching them to read and write, but we have now moved, when we took over um, at 38%, we have moved skills to 46% and it is now trending to be 50 and over by the end of December. So, you have heard about the program in a nutshell and this is my contribution to country and I've just prepared a document now to bridge the divide. Can I speak to you about that now? On occupational certification, once they're finished here, how do they transition into college degrees, occupational degrees? And I've just tendered to my CEO the, the, the concept paper, which the minister is excited about. She's currently working on, it, working on it while she's here for that to be submitted to cabinet and parliament so that that bridge, just like the June Clark, that bridge is created. Thank you very much for listening. I can only take one question because we'd have to save the question until after lunch. Go ahead. One question. Until after lunch. Dr. Conwell, yes. thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Indeed, it demonstrates that uh, that career advancement program was a very suitable, particularly when we follow 
the story of Jane. Dorku mi pieta malo, to se mi dan par. So it seems no wonder that President Obama decided to promote the community colleges in the United States so that every child and every community college will be free because the possibilities for development based on the American community college model is very suitable as the story of Jane demonstrates for that particular kind of student that you prepared to reach the highest goal in education. Thank you so much for that presentation. I really like it welcome. so much. You're most welcome, and thank you. Okay, um, okay. So we're going to move for lunch, and at this particular time, we—it's now 12:30. We get back at 1:30. Yes, one o'clock. Oh, uh, minister is asking that we get back at one. So we're going to have a working lunch. A working lunch. That's what we're here to do. A working lunch. Um, so we're going to move for lunch. <laughs>